The member for Melton. Thank you, Acting Speaker. And I rise to contribute to the Racing Amendment Unauthorised Access Bill 2022. Uh, and firstly, I'd like to uh, thank uh, the member for Ivanhoe, the Minister for Racing, and of course these hardworking staff uh, on their work on these vital updates. Uh, to one of the most important pieces of legislation, the Racing Act 1958, and as well as being a workplace for thousands of Victorians, our racing industry contributes upwards of $4.7 billion to our economy. And of course, racing has been part of our heritage, and I know with my upbringing in the western suburbs, I was very close to uh, race tracks and harness racing tracks, uh, the Royal um, Showgrounds and uh, Flemington Racecourse. And uh, as a younger person, myself and my brother and some friends of ours always used to either jump over the fence and get in free or cut a hole in the fence and get in free. So we were at the races on a weekly basis, so uh, not unusual for boys from Braybrook. But, um, Regional racing is important to country towns and communities. Um, it creates jobs, it creates productivity. Uh, it's a local celebration. And as the member for Morty Alex said, it's not just about the races. It's about getting to these towns and spending some money and having a great time. And I know the local communities uh, enjoy their local races and use it as very much a social event. Um, Tabcourt Park harness racing track, that's in my electorate of Melton. Uh, and it's more than just a racetrack, uh, it's a workplace, it's a, a recreational venue, it's a hotel, it's a conference space, it's a bar. Um, the Tabcourt Park is uh, one of the most um, advanced um, harness racing tracks in all of Australasia uh, and uh, it's a fantastic place and a fantastic, fantastic social gathering place. So. So racing is indeed, worldwide, uh, uh, is indeed a worldwide market and attracts significant international investment and tourism. Uh, and horse racing events such as the Melbourne Cup and the Spring Racing Carnival draw large crowds of both local and international spectators. And while international owners and breeders also participate uh, in the industry by either importing horses or coming here to buy horses when the, when the sales are on, um, they're also participating in the races and we've seen that over um, quite a number of years now in the Melbourne Cup, how, how international it is now. It's not just an Australian race, it's an international race. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the remarks earlier made by the member from South West Coast and I too am part of that club that have spent uh, more money on uh, our animals, our own horses, than what I've spent on ourselves in regard to our health. And I've had, I've owned horses for over 30 years and uh, they're quite expensive when they get injured or sick and, uh, but you do everything you can to um, try and keep them well. Um, uh, as, uh, as I said, you know, I've, I've owned horses for a long time. I've been in racing syndicates with um, friends and family members. Uh, and the member for Ringwood alluded to a syndicate of his cousins. Uh, and he said that they had a very poor win rate. Um, very poor. Well, I can assure him uh, the syndicate that I'm in probably is poorer win rate. So, uh, but we keep going. It's every Saturday. It's like a magnet. They keep dragging money out of our pocket to have an interest in these... Um, beautiful animals running around a track and of course this bill is to try and keep these animals safe by keeping people away from them and, uh, and separating uh, some people that think that they can uh, go into areas that they should not go into. Um, I do want to make reference to the contribution from the member from, for Greenvale and his fantastic contribution and his earlier physics lesson that he gave us and uh, I think it was fantastic and I used to love physics at school and, and, his, and his passionate contribution and he obviously knows a lot about horse racing, the way that he was rattling them all off and I think it was fantastic and, and, and as a horse owner I can confirm that they are around 500 kilos uh, and they do get up the speeds of at least 60 uh, kilometres per hour and they easily get spooked, um, unfortunately. And uh, they do have their own mind at times and there's not a lot that we can do about that when, uh, when a silly human being will try and do some damage and spook a horse of such, um, such great weight and such great speed. Um, and people go to the races and you know, they can have a great time, um, but of course, um, sometimes um, humans, when they go to the races, they indulge with uh, a little bit of alcohol, and most of the times it's men uh, that either try and put themselves in positions that they shouldn't be in on a racetrack that will certainly scare um, the great thoroughbreds. Uh, and also we've seen it at other race meetings, not only in thoroughbred racing, but also in harness racing. And there's been issues at the Greyhounds also where people have 
um, you know, jump, jump the track and, uh, and scared the animals off. Um, this act predates the establishment of the TAB, which led the, the rest of the country in regulating and controlling the growing illegal betting industry. Uh, and while it may have started just down the road from where I grew up, just near the Pioneer Hotel, uh, with its stunning views of the, the Flemington race course, we've seen um, significant and constant changes to this industry and improvements all the time. Uh, and the member for Morty Alec referred to the amount of money that the Andrews Labor government has contributed to try and improve our racing industries and improve the facilities, uh, improve the workplaces and make them safer. And it is a fantastic industry, many tens of thousands of, of jobs and workers, and we need to keep them safe as we need to keep the animals safe right across the industry. Um, the changes to the Act uh, are necessary for a multitude of reasons. Um, um, you know, the, uh, from societal requirements, values and priorities, regulatory changes, protecting and enhancing the safety and welfare of animals, um, technological advancement, transparency, accountability, integrity. This Act is one of the most regularly amended because of this, and all with valid and important reasons. Um, uh, Acting Speaker, um, we, we seek to strengthen um, the Ageing Racing Act by creating allowances within it. And uh, um, some of those are uh, what we're trying to do here is to further protect Victorians uh, at work by prohibiting unauthorised access to the restricted areas of race courses during race meetings and also during official race trials. And by prohibiting certain and um, identified disruptive conduct and allowing for the enforcement of these new offences. Um, these am amendments are about protecting the workforce and the horses and the other animals at other race meetings. And as I alluded to earlier, I I've owned um, horses for over 30 years now. Um, I currently have two um, retired thoroughbreds. Uh, I don't think they won any races. Um, I'm sure they haven't won any races. And, uh, and, the <laughs> and of course, um, I know, I know they're still costing plenty of money because they've got to be fed every day and they've got to be vetted all the time. They've got to have um, you know, farrier treatment and all those sorts of things. So they're a costly beast, but they're a beautiful beast and I wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't get rid of them for quids, even though it's costing us quids to keep them going. Um, some of the necessary alterations that um, are included is expanding the definition of a race course, which allows for the inclusion of areas that are necessary for the safe conduct of the greyhounds, training horses and land use used by racers, and the pathways that are required to connect them. So what you see is quite often you've got areas between the racetrack and either racing stables, um, things like that, that there, there is avenues for access of these animals to be able to get from one to the other. Um, and obviously, um, clearly, um, to try and keep you know, spectators away from these restricted areas. So. Firstly, they don't need to fear with the animal. Secondly, that they don't spook the animal. Um, and we saw an incident at one of the Melbourne Cup events some years ago where um, someone didn't jump the fence, but they waved a quite a substantial sized flag. And one of the high priced horses, which all the high priced horses in the Melbourne Cup, but was, I think it was an import and, and quite a, a favourite within the Melbourne Cup, um, unfortunately got spooked and put its leg through the fence seriously damaged its leg and it had to be euthanised uh, on that day. Um, and that was, an un that, that was avoidable, that particular incident. And, um, you know, even just waving a flag near a horse can spook it and, you know, and damage it, unfortunately. Um, we, we're, through these amendments, we're seeking to create some sort of consistency and, in some instances, make the legislation easier to interpret. And... Uh, uh, with an eye to improving um, compliance and, and the understanding uh, of, of what we're trying to do here. And these are industry-driven amendments, um, um, widespread uh, consultation and acceptance. Um, the community is on board with it all, the industry is on board, uh, and these are amendments, as I said, that are um, approved uh, widely. I've been to many, many race meetings uh, right across the state, um, not only thoroughbred, harness racing, greyhound racing, I've tried them all. Um, um, I've not backed many winners, uh, but uh, it's great fun. It's a great industry. Um, I uh, applaud these changes and amendments to the Act, uh, and I commend the bill.